Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about that upcoming surge in severe weather. We could be having a severe weather outbreak. We're also going to talk a little bit about that heat wave that could potentially be coming to an end. Uh, and we're going to talk about all those things within this video. <music> Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that we will basically stick with a very hot pattern here in the eastern United States through the beginning of June, or do you think that we're going to have a significant cooldown within that time frame? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, I wanted to mention, for the next five days, it looks like there will be no tropical development, so we are going to have a little bit of a slowdown with the tropics, which is really, really good news. Here is the pattern we're basically in, and this is actually a model frame from this morning kind of trying to indicate what we could be dealing with this morning and as you can see mostly hot weather here in the eastern half of the country especially the further north you go compared to normal we have about 15 to 20 degrees above normal temperatures still here on tuesday it actually could get a little bit hotter tomorrow uh, this is tomorrow afternoon so you can see that heat wave is still around for the eastern seaboard there but look at the north central united states a little bit of some colder air makes its way in this could be a potential short-term end to this very very hot weather as this cool down as you can see is basically coming to an end by the time we're reaching very early on Sunday morning here uh, there's plenty of greens around for the Ohio Valley the Northeast the Mid-Atlantic even some some portions of the Gulf states as well that's where we're going to be about 10 to 15 degrees below normal uh, so a significant shift maybe a 30 degree or 40 degree difference uh, in temperatures here uh, and we're going to talk a lot about this on a Patreon post I made today, by the way. So if you want to join our Patreon page, that's going to be in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I go really in depth with when this heat wave could come to an end and when it could also return. So if you check out our Patreon page today and you join it today, you, you won't regret it. First off, I just wanted to mention that uh, we make awesome posts that usually relate to the video. So I highly recommend you do so. Let's just move on to the severe weather portion of this video. This is our day one categorical outlook. And as you can see... Already today, we have a marginal risk basically going from Mexico all the way to Canada uh, through Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan. And we have two slight risk areas as well, which is where it becomes a little bit more scattered in. That's going to be for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, and then one up there for Wisconsin, Michigan, and a little bit of Minnesota as well. These are two areas where we're especially watching for that severe weather threat. Here's that wind outlook, the individual outlook here. And as you can see, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location of damaging winds there within the two green regions there. And as you can see, again, we have a 15% chance for two separate regions, one there for Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, and then one also there for Wisconsin, Michigan, and Minnesota as well. As we move on to that hail outlook, it actually doesn't change at all. It's identical. So we have equal risk for hail and wind. And then we have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location for tornadoes within this very, very large region here, this green region. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at some of the model guidance for this day one. Uh, so the temperatures, the dew points, the cape, all of those things. And then we're going to move on and take a look at the day two and especially the day three risk, which I'm especially worried about. So first things first here is that temperature outlook and as you can see we're going to be in the mid to upper 70s throughout most of these severe weather regions which is very sufficient for severe weather. We're looking for 70s uh, there for the temperatures and we certainly get it. The Cape is definitely going to be higher the further south you go. We have 2,000 to 3,000 amounts widespread throughout Texas, Oklahoma and Kansas and then it's generally about 500 to 1,000 throughout most of the northern half of that marginal and slight risk region. Uh, so the further south you go, I think there's a little bit of a higher risk for hail, in my opinion. Uh, but the wind and uh, tornado threat should be about equal. As we look at that shear, uh, it's much higher the further north you go. Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan definitely have a much higher amount there than Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. And I think that's why that tornado threat is mostly to the north. Because the higher the cape, the higher the tornado threat generally uh, as well as damaging wind threat, in my opinion, as well. Now, by the time we take a look at that day two risk, this is when things get a lot more interesting. We have the two marginal areas, one that's further into the central regions of the United States, and then one up there for the Ohio Valley in the northeastern United States. Within those, they both have slight risks, which, again, is where we begin to get that scattered in severe weather. So for, again, the more central regions of the United States, and then one there for the interior northeastern United States. 
Would I be surprised if there's an enhanced risk upgrade for that eastern one? No, I would not. I think that is a possibility at this point. But for now, in the central United States, we do have an enhanced risk there for Nebraska and Kansas. And that's where that widespread severe weather begins to be likely or at least possible within those regions there. So for the individual outlooks here for the day two, uh, we see that the wind outlook, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the two gra uh, green regions there. And then the two yellow regions is a 15% chance. And then that 30% chance is within that red area between Kansas and Nebraska. We even have that hatched area in there, which means uh, even more significant damage win damaging wind is likely within that region or possible at least. We have our hail outlook here. Uh, within the two green regions, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location for hail to be possible. And then we have that one 15% chance region there, that yellow area uh, for the more central regions. And then we have a hatched area within that, which means two inch diameter hail or more is possible within that region. The tornado outlook becomes a little bit uh, more interesting as well here. We have the two 2% 2 regions within 25 miles of a given location for seeing tornadoes. And we also have the two 5% chance regions there within the two brown regions. Uh, so we're going to be watching for day two, especially, which again is on Wednesday, May 26th, for that uh, tornado threat to really ramp up compared to the day one Tuesday threat. Uh, day three, I'm especially worried about. We're going to get into that in just a moment. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. First things first, we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance for that day two risk, and then we're going to jump right into the day three risk as well. All right, so here we are taking a look at the eastern United States, and this is the high temperatures for Wednesday. Uh, that heat wave will be well underway for the southeastern United States. Upper 90s is going to be pretty widespread throughout the southeast. The northeast, where we're seeing severe weather, should be in the upper 70s to ranging anywhere basically from the upper 70s to the 90s. So we're going to have a wide a variety of different temperatures, but generally all of that is sufficient for severe weather, so it won't really matter as far as severe weather implications go. It's going to be hot enough for those storms to really, really get going for those northeastern regions. Now, for the central United States, it's upper 70s to lower to mid 80s here for most of those severe weather regions. We have that cape jumping well into the 2000s and 3000s, even 4000s here, uh, widespread throughout the central United States. Uh, and then here for the eastern United States, uh, it's going to be anywhere generally from about 500 to 1500 there for the Cape, which is convective available potential energy. I haven't mentioned that yet in this video. It's basically thunderstorm uh, food. So the more of this that is available, uh, the more those thunderstorms will be able to just develop further and further and further uh, and just build more and more and more, eating up more and more of that food. Uh, without really dissipating. Once they run out of cape, that's when they start to die down. So the more cape there is, the more they can just continue to develop or at least maintain. Now for that day three categorical outlook, I'm especially worried about this one. We have a slight risk there for the central United States and a very large enhanced risk for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. I would not be surprised if we end up with a moderate risk or higher uh, here for this Thursday, May 27th time frame. I'm really worried about this and we're going to be watching this very closely, but for now we have a very large enhanced risk, which is already bad enough. The temperatures are going to generally be in the lower to mid 80s for these regions, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Missouri, Arkansas. The dew points will be in the upper 70s, lower 60s there, which will be highly sufficient for severe weather as well. And therefore this cape ends up in the 2000 to 3000 to even 4000 range again for the second day in a row here. Uh, so this is not looking good. Also, the shear is quite high there, especially on the western end. I'm watching for some tornadoes, Oklahoma, Kansas especially, but also Arkansas, Missouri, and surrounding regions. So we're going to be watching for a higher tornado threat to be possible on that date, uh, and I'm going to be obviously updating you guys on that as we draw closer and closer and closer. Now, for our confidence tab, we're at a 5 out of 6. All of these things are very short range. There's a little bit of uncertainty there, especially with day three, if what kind of conditions we will end up with. We have a couple of days to go, so that's why we're not out of a six out of six, but we still have quite high confidence considering the range. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, uh, when do you think we will have our next tropical cyclone? And Election Prediction HQ said, I think the next one will form in early June, maybe around June 4th to the 6th. Uh, that's pretty specific, and I'm curious to see if that will take place or not. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Larry Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Flago, Gary's, John Quilisi, and Dwight Phelan. 
If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page and gain access to those awesome posts that we try to bring to you guys as often as possible, and also be on this Patreon end screen today, you can do so by joining our very, very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hero Farms 1 and Catbite. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.